Okay, welcome back. I know we took a really long break from doing the Thursday Night Lives here at the Jewish Platform. Way back, I got busy with the new film, Des Desperate Measures, and we had many other things happening, but we are back. I don't know if it's a new season. Hopefully this is going to continue. And in order to kick this off, we brought on one of the most influential people in Yiddish music today. He is probably the most sought out for Chasanes. He's been doing tons of events and concerts galore for the past three, four years or something like that. He quickly raised to starism. He's the star in the from world. Let us welcome the one and only Smilly Unger. Smilly, how you doing? You know how to get a person excited, I'll tell you that. Okay, welcome guys, you everybody. can sit down. You can sit down. Shh. All right. Everybody be seated. Smilly, how you doing? Baruch Hashem, Baruch. It's very nice to be here in, uh, in the studios in uh, the Jewish platform studios. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's just like a valdig quotes from Cezando. Amazing. Shmili, you were new on the platform about four years ago. You put out your first debut album, Shmili 2. Not sure what happened with Shmili 1, but okay. There's no Shmili 1. There's no such a thing. Hashem is one. Oh! Even when he opened the Gemur, he opened a Gemur once in a while, but uh, never opened it with no, you. No, okay, okay. When you open a Gemurah, you're going to see that it starts by Dav Bais. Dav Bais and Madalov. Because, you know, Aleph is the Bashef. So we start with two. You can't start with one. What kind of... Who <laughs> would, would it have? Shmili one. Who, would, who does he think he is? <laughs> putting out Shmili one. Good night. So we started with Shmili two. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I know from the Castle of God. Anyway, you started off Shmili one. You had some... Shmili two. Shmili two. <laughs> the Bashef is Eins. And the new album, we'll get to discussing it. You have over there that song. The pi I don't know if it's a Paisach Negin, but the Paisach Negin, Adir Bimlichu. Adir Bimlichu, oh, Paisach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lachu, Lachu. Uh, is it called? Uh, is it called Lachu? Lachu, oh, yeah. Mm. Take. But anyway, um, you started off with your first album. You had some Knak Neginim on there. You had MSV Amin Chazois, every Chasana, every, everything that was a song. He had the which is a beautiful hot ticket song. Came with a beautiful music video. Such a nice song. I have to give you a thank you. I even put it in my last film, The Skull of a Genius. No. We got permission from you. We got permission from Naftali Schnitzler, of course. Because you asked nicely. You asked very nicely. I didn't ask nicely. <laughs> and he didn't. Okay, I don't even remember. <laughs> I appreciate it. And after you put out the first album, I believe that it was around that time, all of a sudden, Shmili Junger became the singer at Chasanes and everywhere else. Give me a quick, brief history yourself, how you got into the music industry, Shmili 2. Tell me a little bit about that. So you see, for you it started after Shmili 2 because you were doing your thing. On a, where, where do you live? You live in Monsi? Flatbush? Whatever it is. Undisclosed location. Howell, New Jersey. Howell, New Jersey. I don't even know where that is. Next to Tom's River. Next to Tom's River. So, so you were doing your thing, doing your videos, your movies, and then you heard of us of Shmili too? I didn't even hear I didn't even hear his first album. Who is this guy? That's what you were thinking. And then maybe you bought the album. You liked what you heard. Rachmona, you said you put it in, in your movie. But for me, it didn't start by Shmili 2. Shmili 2 was uh, maybe, I would say, the beginning of, you know, coming out, uh, doing music for more than just my community in Monroe, Monsi, the Hasidic Shechevre. So I started, I started, I would say, my first chasana I did was in 2000, yeah, 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 maybe 2011 or 2010. Can I know how was my first chasana. It was a friend of mine in yeshiva. And he was a Vishnitzer Bukhid, and but the Vishnitzer, they, they don't have a singer. They just have a one-man band. A singer is Agoy Shazach. Of course. You know, Agoy Shazach. <laughs> so, so he, Mamish, like a, a, a week before his chasen, he, he, he knew that I'm taking voice lessons. It started even earlier. It started when I got to that yeshiva, my sister became engaged. Wait a second. Wait a yeah, why are we it, back up? Back really, up. how old are you? Back it up. How old do you think I am? 28. All right. I'm 30. I just turned 30 in October. Tishnei. We should make a happy birthday thing for you. Come on, come on. <coughs> you said before you're an actor, you're a singer, director, producer. Let me hear those vocals. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> everybody's going to log off before. 
<laughs> so, so... You were born in 1990. I was born in 1990, October 1990, yes. And I lost my father. My father passed away when I was 14. That was a big, a big, a big deal, a big uh, trauma in my life back then. And my grandfather, my father's father, became involved in my life and my family's and my sister's. And he, he knew that I could sing because I used to sing a chaydet with the Ruv, with the Rebbe, the Yerushalayim Aruv came, by the CM from the Hindered Blatt. Whenever there was occasions in camp, um, you never sang for Moshe Krauss. You, ne- you, ne- you never got into any of the choirs. I did. I did. When I was a bucher, I would go to Moshe Krauss, a good friend of mine. And I, when he would call me in, he would, I don't know, $15 an hour. Or ten, well, I don't even remember how much, but I would do. I did backup vocals for Sruli Verdegir. For Lipa Schmelzer, I did uh, um, Hi, good morning to the band, to the bum. You know that song? I don't. Hi, good evening. Chagdaman, Abad Shalom. It's a good song. Mona did the music, so I remember I did I did backup vocals with Moshe Kroos for that album. So I did work with Moshe. I Kroos. did work. I, I meant yes. that I was gonna say it sarcastically that Moshe Kroos wasn't around twenty something years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no not with Yiddish Nachas. He he did he did studio work. Yiddish Nachas is a new project for Moshe Kroos. He had his old studio on Quickway, he where he did just the independent uh, 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 discs with Chaim Blumenfeld or you know. Uh, some like collages, Piram collages, right. or Paisich, so such stuff. Then Yiddish Nachas came along, mamish, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking now 2008, 9, that area, 10, 11. Aha, uh-huh. beautiful. So you were a bocher, 15 years old, and yes. you're doing... So I'm, I'm more, I'm older, I'm older, I'm like 17, and my sister becomes engaged, and my Zayda calls me up Shabbos, or whatever, we're going up Shabbos to my grandfather, and says, Shmil Dovid, my name is Shmil Dovid Ongar. Not to confuse it with the Nitra people, because Nitra Ruv was also named Shmuldovadunga, but he was a Livy. I'm not a Livy. I'm trying to do be You're not a Nitra Ruv either. No, I'm not a Nitra Ruv. No, no, no. But I could be a Nitra Ruv. Yes. Vilnor. So I was 17. My Zayda calls me and he says, you're going to do, you're going to sing by your sister's wedding. And I was, I was like shocked and I was very intrigued. I said, I, I don't think I'm capable of doing the whole wedding. But I, I, I will take the mic if you want me to, but, but if, if we're going to do this, we got to do it right. I want to take voice lessons, I got to buy a microphone, a echte mic, you know. I even needed a cordless mic, because cordless was, was the yeah. hack, you know, that was the hack, cordless. Yeah, yeah. So he got me a cordless mic, he got me the inner monitor, it's very expensive, it's like $1,500, $2,000. And we, we came to an agreement that he's going to be paying for everything, all the expensive voice lessons, for the business cars, you know, he's going to drive me. I didn't drive, I was a Bukhari Yeshiva, so he's going to drive me to my gigs, and whatever money comes in is 50-50, right? It's a pretty fair deal. What fair do you think? Deal. You think? Did, did he know that you can become a Shmili Nobody or? knew, you know, back then, I got to say, I was, I was nothing. I was just an awkward, heavy Bukhari who had just lost his father a few years ago. And, you know, liking to sing, enjoying to do... You know, that's, you know... I was very happy my sister got engaged, you know, because that was, like, the first thing that's happening that's normal in my family, you know. Things are moving, we're getting married, I was next, I'm a Bukharin Yeshiva. Anyway, so I told them I will sing a few songs by the Hasana, but but if, if you want me, I should become a singer. We gotta set it up. We're gonna do it right. And he paid for everything. He paid for my voice lessons every month. Shabbos he would give me a hundred bucks, and every Wednesday I would go to the voice lesson. I would make like a, not a day of it, but after six o'clock I would take the bus, go to the lesson. The lesson was seventy dollars. So with the rest of thirty dollars, I went. I bought myself some supper. You know, my to in the Oh. oh. Um, so it was a very nice thing every Wednesday I would go out in by my sister's wedding Lomasa I, I did I did I did a few songs Beri Weber sang at the wedding Shmuel Beir Weber his name was oh, yeah. and I did I did a few Snagina by the, by the meal I did Omar Omar Akadosh Baruch you know that one? yeah of course and I did I did Ashihi Voshefteinu Kavadi Shoina from Gertner yeah yeah these two for sure, and then my baby. By the end of the wedding, I did Al Chaim Musa Yeh Yeh, just nothing. But the, the two main songs I did by the meal, I I Umar Kodesh Borich I for sure messed up. I think I remember I just didn't whatever. 
And but the other one, Ushiba Shoftenu, I nailed it. I think it was good. With the British accent or without the British no, accent? No, no British accent. No British just, accent. Just just Yeshivish or Hasidish I feel like. So to make it to make it to make it fast, so that's so my friend knew that I'm a singer, I'm going to voice lessons and everything. He told me she will do it. I'm getting married in two weeks. Didn't hire a singer. If you want, my father told me you can come, you can sing. He doesn't he doesn't have money to pay you, but feel free to come over and you know you know to sing Lama Zain. I, I, I used to do like Shabbos Vadas and Yeshiva, so I, I was familiar with some stuff, but I there was so much that I didn't know, and I thought I know everything already. So I got to the wedding, Mazaida took me, and, and I had a, a list of the songs. Couldn't memorize all those Nagin and Pow, or or Yada Da, Yada Da, or the Zekta Kovanig. How does it go? Me? I'm thinking, but that's a square. The Zekta Kovanig, the Satma, is Nine La Da, in La, and in La. So all those songs, they don't have words I can write down. So I, have my, I had my Samunam, and I wrote down a list of songs so I shouldn't run out in the middle of the wedding. And I forgot it at home. Can you believe oh, it, Buddha? I forgot it at home. You can't make it up. <laughs> and I come to the Chasana, and I'm all nervous, and my friends were there from the yeshiva because of Chavar from yeshiva at Chasana, and I told, I told them, I lost the list. What am I going <laughs> to do? And so a friend of mine quickly put together, he had a pen and paper, and wrote me down like 10, 15 songs. He said, just have this for now. To get you through. I started doing the chasana. My grandfather was beaming. He was sitting by wow. the table there by the cake and, you know, the soda. Yeah, yeah. And he was just looking and he, he was so excited. I started singing. I did a few motcha songs, I remember. I remember I did Anno Melech Malchei Hamlochim. And my magachir came over to me. A good magachir, Reb Hametzim Fogu. And he says, he, he told me as Shmuel you know, being a good singer is not just having a good voice and talent. You gotta know what to sing. That's what he told me. And and he looked at me, he says, Look, you're in here in a Tatus Chadna it was. With about a lot of Vishnitsa people, you know, with the white sacks, you're doing on a melech machum lochum. It's nice, it's good, but they don't care for this music. You know, you can do Vishivisi, yeah, Sham. He didn't tell me that, but I'm just telling you, do that, those kind of stuff. So that was an important lesson that you gotta know what to sing. It's not about you. It's about the people, it's about the crowd, it's about the audience. Yeah. Yes, yes. So Shmili 2 came in 2016, and we're talking now 2010, where I lost my piece of paper and I got to the <laughs> wedding while you were in Howell, New Jersey, doing your movies. 2010, I was at Bocher and oh. Stolny Yeshiva and Borough Park. <laughs> Azoi. Azoi. Yeah, so you also... You're I was about, 15 years old at the time. So I'm older than you, what, you're 27? I'm 28. Oh, I thought I'm the youngest I'm player in the room to, tonight. I'm trying to figure it out. In 2010, I was... <laughs> what year were you born? I was 18. You yeah. were 92? I was born in 92. Wow, I thought you were 18 years old. Yeah. Either way, so I was doing my thing, and I was slowly, slowly, and then I got married. I got married in 2012, and I got divorced. And I remember while I was going through my divorce, it was, it was, I don't want to go into details, but it was a mekech to us to begin with. It was a lot of information I didn't know, nobody knew. But I remember a lot of decisions when I was, when I was making, am I going to go back together? Sh you know, should I end this now? And I thought, what kind of a singer am I going to be? Is this I'm going to be a Gugeta guy, a Gurish? There's no way, there's no way I'm going to be able to make a name of myself, a name for, name for myself. If people know, yeah, he's this divorced guy from Monroe, whatever, blah, blah. So it played a, 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 did a I'm not gonna say take, it played a, a big key in my decision, but it went through my mind. You know, you know, I'm trying to do this. I'm gonna get divorced now. It might end everything. But at that time, I I I I I I got a, a few new friends. You know, friends always in your life. You surround yourself with different people. You grow and you grow. So at that time, I found I found a guy's name of Schnitzler, Naftali Schnitzler, and he was a big producer. You know, Naftali. <laughs> Who so, doesn't know Naftali? So I didn't know him back then, and, and through a friend, I got some answer, maybe if you want to know the story, I will tell you the story, but I became good friends with him, and together, even though there was no like a big contract or anything, but just being in his presence and knowing that this guy is working with Betty Weber, and, and, and uh, Yoli Greenfeld, and Lipa Schmelzer, this was enough for me, to, you know, I got this man on my side, gave me a lot of confidence, and wow. that, that changed everything for me, because 
if, if, if you don't have any confidence, I was doing weddings, I was getting at the wedding, I was, I was being paid three, four hundred dollars, and the musicians were not top quality musicians, they were Takuna musicians, they were all good people, but you know, it's, it's, I got Yana Poonam, and I came that noon, and I'm always, I'm, I was busy knowing all the new stuff, all the new stuff, this is all the weapons I had, what else I'm gonna tell them, why should you take me? I know the new stuff, and I, and, and I, I tried my best, and I had the cordless mic. Also, that's oh, when I made my decision. Like, and, and the earpiece. <laughs> I made a decision. I don't like the cordless mic. I'm going to get a wire with a mic. And I was proud of myself for, you, for, for knowing that, you know, the cordless is all fun. It's good. But with the wire, that works better for me. Um, so that's also important, knowing what you want and not just doing what everybody else is doing. What, you know, the, 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 the what's the name? Not, not cliche. The... What is, the, what is the word in English? Uh, 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 status quo. Status quo. Um, so, so, so having that gig, I come up on stage and I start singing. And the problem was, you, you know what pitch means? Pitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's off key and then there's off pitch. Off key, you're off tuned. You can yeah, yeah, yeah. noticeable. But pitch is... I, I'm very good at the off key thing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So, which brings me back to my first chasana. I ran after the musician, after the chasana. Where's the, where's the recording? I need the recording. I want to listen to it. And he finally got it to me, and I was in yeshiva. I put on the headphones, and I started listening, and it was no good. It was horrible. And I, I didn't even know what the problem was, but I just knew this is not how a singer is supposed to sound. I was mamish embarrassed. And the problem was pitch. That was the problem. I didn't even know the word was pitch. I didn't even know that. And also, there's all kinds of songs that you do at a wedding. Some songs go higher, some songs go lower. So you got to know the key in which you want to do it in. And at that point, I just started songs. Whatever the key was playing, that song I started. And a lot of times, I couldn't reach on the bottom. And a lot of times, I, I saw it's going to be too high, so just the mic got unplugged by accident. <laughs> I made it work. But well, I tell you, singers out there, aspiring singers, you should know, if you ever had the wrong key, the wrong anything... Unplug the mic. <laughs> or, or, I think I did a game, Sharice, um, some time back for, for your Didim Choir mm -hmm. for their 10 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions were, what does the singer do if he messes up? And, and what he's supposed to do is look at the choir. So if you see you can't reach the key, just give it over to the choir. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not always nice to do it, but the choir usually is, is better equipped because they're a choir, even though they can't reach it. But it's together, and it sounds good. And also, usually, they have the guy doing the active. So that guy can always reach the high notes. I had one story, not with Yedidim, it was with Cheetah Choir. Always remember this story. But remember we in Soma Gehalten. I, I came to it, it was a bar mitzvah, Rabinovich. I remember in Williamsburg, 2015. And it was in the Sfira. Still before Shmili too. Yes, way before Shmili too. Way before Shmili too. yes. I, it was Sfira, it was a bar mitzvah, and he had Shira choir and Avrumi Schreiber on the drums. No music, but they wanted to be different. And we get there, and we go, I go with Shraga Favel Gold, uh, from Shira, what we're going to do, what we're going to sing, and I ask him, there's no music, so I have my keys, we mentioned keys before, I, we're going to do this and this song, this is on an A minor, we're going to be coming from this song, which is on an F minor, so, you know, I have my phone, I can check the key to start the next song. And he says, no, 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 I got this. You just follow the choir, we'll do whatever. And we start the song from Greenfield. You know it? You know it? You don't know it. Anyway, I start the song and I realize right away, this is not the right key. This is something is going to happen, just wait and see. So I did the first part, and it came to the high part. I just turned around and said, Shire! Like, <laughs> take it away, something like that. And they knew, Shraga knew also right away, yeah, what was, was the wrong key. Anyway. Put it this way, so. at least I have Rumi Schreiber on the drums. Yes, he was, he was solid, solid. <laughs> so you were saying that you got back, you got the recording from the Chasna, you went into the dorm, you went into Yeshiva, you put yeshiva the earphones the on, it was horrible, the pitch was, was off. The pitch was off, so which, which, oh, so which takes me further, so I was doing these gigs for $350, $450, $550. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, Actually, maybe I'm for people singer. living in... Uh, in Howell. <laughs> and I was going to say, I don't know, in Cuba or in North Korea, $300 is a lot of money. But it was, it was nice. I was, it wasn't yeah, anything, yeah. it was nice pack of money. I, 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 I was working for Shira Choir also then. And also by Shira, I would make $600, $800 for Shabbos, whatever. It was nice, good money to put away uh, for the house, and just to have for, for my savings. 
So, so you were asking me as an ophthalmologist, so confidence, that's what we were uh, right. uh, talking about. So when you get up on stage, you charge $300, nobody knows who you are. You're at the wedding because, uh, either because your friend is a good friend of the Mechitin and the neighbor, he pulled it off, he got you in and taking $200 agent money, you know, <laughs> either for that reason. Or I'm there because just it's a takuna chasa and the Mechitinim don't have a big budget and they're happy with whatever they have. So I get up there. And, and I, I want to do all these new songs and try to be, try to be, uh, uh, to just to do different. And, 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 and it, it's hard. It's very hard when you don't have a monitor. Or if you have an inner monitor, but the musician doesn't know how to hook it up or what to give you to hear. I was having a lot of, a lot of nights like that where just, at the end of the wedding, it was good. People were felt good. But in the beginning or, or, or during, I would feel you like. You were feeling it. It no, wasn't. I was thinking to myself, what, what are you doing here? Shmilduva, I was still Shmilduva then, I think. At one point, I changed my name to Shmili. My mother didn't like it because Duvid is from her side. It's my mother's mother's father. And Shmil is from my father's father's father. So, so that's why Shmilduva don't got it. I have nothing with Naitre. Shmil is from my father's side yeah, and Duvid yeah. from my mother's side. Um, it could still be Naitre Ruv, though, yeah. Yeah, it could still be Naitre Ruv. And, and then some. <laughs> So I started calling myself Shmili. I don't know, I, I, I forgot what I was saying, because I also wanted to say that I changed my hat. I used to wear a stoffen hit. You know what a stoffen hit is? Never heard of it. How do you call a stoffen hit? A chulen like, top, yeah. A chulen top, it's called? Chulen top, yeah. No, why? A chulen top, it's called? Chulen top. <laughs> How do you think we make chulen? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a hat called a Hamburg. That was the yeah, line yeah, in the I, middle. I know what a stoffen is. So I used to wear a stoffen hit in the, in the weekdays. And All my life I went to Salman Mikva. I'm saying uh, I know what it is. What do you wear now? A cracker? I don't know, whatever I see around. Whatever you see here, whatever's available. <laughs> yeah, a krachet, yeah. We call it an up hat in, in civilized, yeah. The, a bar park here. Yeah. The yeah. Bar park yeah, yeah. I hear. So, so I changed. I, at Shabbos, I would wear a flacha biberit, and in the, the weekdays, I would wear a stuff and a hit. You, you were already married in... At this point, when I changed... You were changed married my, and divorced. You weren't wearing a flach bibit anymore on Shabbos. You mm, were in a shtam. Right, right, right. But I'm talking, I guess, in 2009, 10, by my first wedding, first few weddings. Before I got married, I got married in the end of 2012. So I'm talking between 2010 and 2012. I was doing maybe 10 gigs a year. So every, all, all in all together, I came to weddings and I saw that the hat I'm wearing is not, it's not the mainstream hat. You got to understand, I'm coming from Monroe. And Monroe, there's the Flache Biberet, and the, the, the Maderana, where the stuff, even the stuff on it is, where, is, is, you know, more cool. But when I, I became Bar Mitzvah, my father told me, Shmulduvet, I want, to, want you to wear a Hoyche Biberet. A Hoyche Biberet, everyone no, knows yeah, what it is. A Biberet. A Biberet, right. A Biberet. Because there's a Flache Biberet and a Biberet. Exactly. But in Monroe, there's a Biberet and a Hoyche Biberet. Perhaps. <laughs> So, so I saw the mainstream matters of Hoi Chabibarit, and I'm wearing a stuff on it, and also Shabbos. I didn't like the flach hit Shabbos because I was a big guy, not like now. I used to, I used to be big. And <laughs> I see you, 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 you didn't know how to, what's, what's happening. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> you used to be big. Anyway, but yeah, kids it. I didn't like the flach hit, and I wanted to change it to Hoi Chabibarit because when I became Bar Mitzvah, my father told me, maybe you wear a Hoi Chabibarit because he, that's what he wore. He learned in Babov in Barra Park. And he wore such a hat, but we moved to Monroe, and in Monroe the custom was a stuff in it and a flat right, hit. Yeah. There was a few Hoi Chabibar hitting, but they were like, everybody knew, oh, that guy with the Hoi Chabibar hit. They were different. Yeah, yeah. So I told him, Tati, just please, stuff in it, I don't want to be different. Laban, exactly. Yeah. So, and he was very cool, whatever, did the round, I'm hit and finish. So I became 18 and I was doing weddings, and I did a lot of Bob of a wedding stock because I had a good agent in Bob of. And I saw the Hoi Chabibrit is the mainstream ad, so I went, I asked my Rebbe, Rebbe Ham Labish Rottenberg, and for Shea I learned in his yeshiva. And I told him, I want to change my hat, I don't like the stuff on it, I want to change to the Hoi Chabibrit. And Shabbos, I'll stay with the Flachet. And he says, change everything, just put on the Hoi Chabibrit, Shabbos and Wachen, cut out everything. So it was just funny, and I, I started wearing that hat, and I'd also, it also, it, 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 so Tzigi gave me to the feeling, the, okay, you know, uh, uh, I'm Schnitzler. My name is Shmili Unger. I'm wearing the Hoi Chabibarit. Shmili Unger or Shmili Unger? Either way. We had a big pre-interview machlokes. Okay. If it's Unger or Unger. Shmili Unger. Shmili Unger. Shmili Unger. In Monroe I was Unger. The Litvisha people call me Unger. Unger. I'm saying. Unger. People know my Shmili. Shmili. But how do you call me my first name? Shmili. 
Oh, so if you say Shmili, it's usually Unga, Shmili Unga. But if you say Shmuli, then it's Unga. Yeah, you'll be yeah. surprised. Hello, Shmuli. Shmuli, all over Shmuli, the place. Shmuli, you're available for my chasna for my tomorrow yeah. night. Hi, Shmuli, can you make me a video? Because my neighbor is getting bar mitzvahs, and because of corona, he's not going to have his friends. So you can make me a video. I'm trying to collect a video, Shmuli. Anyway, so a lot of people call me Shmuli. So Shmuli is Unger, and Shmili is Unger. Ah, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, Givaldic, one second. I just want to, this segment is Moedidic. I just want to, I, I just want to um, put it like this. We see like this. Your grandfather had faith in you, mm -hmm. right? He saw this, in your words, this heavy, awkward <laughs> bochet, and he said, I'm going to pay for your voice lessons, I'm going to pay for your cordless mic, I'm going <laughs> to pay for your in-ear monitor. Your grandfather went ahead, and he had faith in you, and from that awkward bochet with the flat behead. And a man where they call it a plain bee bed, yeah? <laughs> From that turned into Shmilionger or Shmulionger. It turned into that. And, and we see, somebody goes ahead, somebody has faith in th somebody. It can really make all the difference. And also, like you said, Naftuli Schnitzner, when you're going through that rough period of time, he went ahead, he gave you confidence. Sometimes just having a good friend, yeah? That gives somebody confidence can be the difference between I don't know if it's nice to say, but the difference between a $300 a night chasna with a musician that doesn't know how to plug in an earpiece monitor and being a superstar. We're going to cut quickly for a commercial break, and we are going to come back with our next question. Hello, the Freestyle Back from Okay, welcome back. Shmilly commercial breaks over. Neat. Okay, you went ahead, you put out Shmilly 2, all right? So what happened, you were, you were, this is talking about 2015, you were divorced, you're doing chasnes, but, but you're not where you want to be. You, you have it in you to be a superstar and sagainish. Where do we go from there? So I, I never had this feeling I'm trying to be a superstar sagainish. I never, even, even right now, there's always place to move forward. You can call me Madraigela Madraiga. Yeah, yeah, we'll get so, to it. I always felt good about myself, even 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 in the Tatan was Khunish Gahad Gunish. I always I, I felt good about myself. I knew that I can sing nice, wasn't the most professional, I never thought I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a wedding singer Bechlal, But I felt good about myself. So in twenty six in twenty sixteen I didn't think of myself like a geitnish. To me it looked like Mahta Gita CD, we did a nice concert in its rule with Shulam Vakshal, Shmili too, I had MBD on stage and to me, it looked, and then I became engaged. I got married, Mamish after Shmili too, and I remember during the I was dating her, and then came out the the an interview I did in a in a paper called the Moment, and she read the whole interview and she checked my Twitter feed, everything I ever tweeted. She had a lot of info <laughs> that I didn't I didn't get from her, but that wasn't the same time. I I, I we did Shmili too. We did the concert. I got married, and it, it was a lot of a lot of things happening, and uh, for the good. Yes, yes, you it was always, always going better, better. We had Rachmuna, we had MS, 
We had a nice Yiddish song that I was very proud of. We had an Ashe Bucha. We had a few good Neginim there that I, I found myself doing at shows or at weddings, wherever, at events, where I would perform. I would do a lot of my stuff. People would, 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 would request it. And you always, when you put out a CD, it goes, and people start waiting for more. When you're putting out your next one, well, you know, where's your, where you're heading, and you keep on putting out videos, but a CD, you got to have material, right? Because people want to hear the material, and I want to get to that soon about putting out CDs. Anyway, so to answer your question, I felt good about it myself in 2016, oh, even though, sure. I, even now, I'm still not there. You can always grow. You can always, you can reach the whole world. This is uh, six billion people, and what, how, what, how much have I reached? This is Monroe, Monsi, Willensburg, Burp, Glekwood, Flatbush, Fife Downs, and... Oh. And Howell, we Howell. just reached Howell. Tom's River. Tom's Pomona. River. Moshe so, doesn't live in Muncie. Moshe lives in, in Pomona. 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 Right. Pomona. He's living in Pomona with the bears. Yeah. I know. So there is always room to grow. So it's a big bit is grass. You know, you, you try to expand and expand. And you know, it's you can reach more and more people in this day and age with, with YouTube and, and, and the social media. It's so and much Jewish easier. Platform. Yes, and Jewish platforms. And uh, yes, uh, the Jewish platform. The Jewish platform. <laughs> so now we're in 2018, and all of a sudden, oh. you went ahead and you put out not Shmuley 3, but you went ahead and you put out Macha Brocha. Now, Macha Brocha was definitely one of the most successful songs in the past five, ten years. I'm saying you put out a song singing in Hasidish Yiddish, Macha Brocha. I have no idea how you paired up together with Mayor Kay. You made that music video that was, wow, it has over five and a half million views on YouTube. And that song went all over the place, mm -hmm. yeah? And it, it was a whole album. But Macha Brocha's song did to you what, what Yesh Tikva did to Benny Friedman. I'm I saying, wish, I wish. No, eh. it shot you up there. Yeah. And everybody was singing. Tell, tell me a little bit about nice. your second album. It was no Yesh Tikva, but I, I understand because of lack of a better term, you would compare it to that. But Yesh Tikva was huge, Yesh Tikva. Even Benny couldn't keep up with Yesh Tikva. Were you able to keep up with Macha Brocha? Yes, I was able to, because Macha Brecha was not so, you look at Yesh Tikva, how many views that has on YouTube, maybe 50 million, I don't know. I it has, it has, we discussed it at Benny's interview. So, so, so Yesh Tikva was really, really big. Macha Brecha, Macha Brecha was, was very gutsy, was gutsy first because I'm a Hasidic guy, and the, the beat, the rhythm of Macha Brecha is, is more, more secular, but, the, you know, pop, if you want to call it. Mambaba, Mambaba to Skrif and Jazzy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. She didn't want to listen to it, huh? No, I'm saying, I, I don't even know if she was alive on Macha Brocha. But she would call it jazz. She would call it jazz. Yes, yes. Jazz, jazz. Jazz, but jazz, but but jazz, but you understand what she wanted to say. Yeah. So Macha Brocha, I would never, ever put out such music, such a song, such a title track, nothing. But I had Siata Deshmai, it's all Siata Deshmai. We had Surule Meir on our team. And he did the marketing, and he did, he did the social media, and he always gave us direction what we should do and what we need to do, maybe make a duet, always, you know, brainstorming and looking and, 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 and thinking. And we were going to put out this, the, the, the second album, and we were looking for a title track. And we, the first one we did, Shmili 2, and it was all weird. Why Shmili 2 with the questions? You know, even now you ask me why Shmili 2. Right. If it would have been named Yevurach, you wouldn't ask anything. Beautiful, Yevurach. Yevurach. But Shmili too, always people, it, it, it invites questions. So we were thinking by the second album, do we want to double down on the joke? Do we want to just move forward? What are we doing? And there was a few title tracks and there was a song, Takamacha Brocha. It wasn't track one. It wasn't something big. It was like something funky, something nice, something different. Something in between, not too Hasidish, but not too left, you know? Very uh, versatile. You were able to get to everybody. Yeah, right. something like that. And, I mean, the real Hasidim said it's no good. They could not listen to this in their house, which is understandable. But, but it, for the mainstream, it was good. And Sruli Meir pushed us very much to, you know, he, I remember he said, it's time to step out of the small shoes and to step into the big shoes. That's the term he used. You want to do something big? Name it Macha Brocha, and it's going to be Macha Brocha. It's a big message. It's, 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 it's Yiddish and it's English. Even people... It was universally exactly. accepted. It was Macha universally Brocha. accepted. So we did that song, and then Meir K. How did we... Meir K? I think you're the only one in the world that calls him Meir K. Yeah. 
maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah. Mayor yeah. K. Mayor K. It's like the right. people that call um, um, Mayor de Blasio instead of Mayor de Blasio. I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. In, I, in my context, his, his name is spelled M E I R as Mayer. Mayer. Not, not Mayer. Cerulean Mayer is M A Y E R. So that's Mayor, Mayor de Blasio. Anyway. So I don't know how he, 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 he got to us, or maybe I don't know, we definitely reached out to him. But why did we reach out to him? Because I already had done a video with him called Carpal Karaoke. He used to do it, Carpal Karaoke. Yeah, you know yeah. what that is. So we did that, I think, after Shmili 2, I think. I don't know when it was. Yes, it was right after my, my wedding. So it was for Shmili 2. So we knew about Mayor K. And then he put out videos with Mori Shapiro. He did vi- right. videos with, with Benny Friedman, I think, Toda. And we just liked his Every work. Anarchy. If you know him, yes. If you know him with the boss, with the colorful boss. If you know him, has the mo- has has more more views than than Yeshtikla. Yes. A lot more. Interesting, but Yeshtikla was much more of a breakthrough than every Yonoichi. Interesting. So I saw his his material, his videos, and we reached out to him, and it was very expensive. And I think I think we passed. And then we saw a lot of other guys, and blah, 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 we came back to Mayor K. And we, we signed an agreement, and we told him, this is the song, what do you see in a video? And he came back with a, with a whole... The concept. Uh, yes, with the numbers, 006, this happens, 008, this happens, the whole thing. It's storyboard. A storyboard. Oh, just like Mr. Mr. Producer. Yeah, yeah. So with a, like a whole came sheet. Came back with a storyboard. Yeah, what's happening, there's going to be kids and maluchim and angels building the Baisamikdash, making bruches. And we just did a video. I didn't... I, I, you know, it's so funny. You, 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 you think when Benny was recording Yesh Tikva, that he was, he was thinking to himself, this is the hit that's happening. You don't think that way. You just go into the studio, you do your thing, you do the best that you can. You get to the, to the, to the, to the shooting place where the shooting Macha Brucha, you see all kinds of uh, props and objects and painting. You know, a lot of work. The sun, somebody was actually picking it up. It, what I, if you're going to watch the movie, you're going to see... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, somebody cut it out, was sitting weeks and making the props. Wait a second, wait a second. That means you actually went into a... Um, um, you're in a box of um, oatmeal or something like that. And yeah. Did, did you actually no, go no. into... <laughs> Funny. It was on a green, and a green, green... Green screen. Green screen. So where we were standing was not a green screen, but it was, lo- was like a box. And by the corner was like... It wasn't a corner... It was round. It was round, yeah. And Surely that's where we... I have a green screen studio in my house. So you know how it is. I know what it We're in, like, in, yeah. in, in Howell. In Howell, yeah. In Howell. You come visit. Um, let me ask you. Okay, so... so yeah, so we did the video and it was too. nice. It was good. People loved it and it, 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 it became what it became. But we did everything. We just did it. We didn't know what's going to happen. Right. So we, we discussed this. We started off saying in the beginning of Macha Bruch, you said the beat and... The real Hasidim, I don't know what you mean by real, I do know what you mean. Real Hasidim, not real Hasidim. A stone, real Hasidim, or not. Yeah, but okay. So let me ask you something. We, we, we were saying earlier about the Macha Brochi, you were saying about the real Hasidim, so I'm not going to get into who's real Hasidim, who's not real Hasidim. If you're against the Medina, you're real Hasidim. If you're not against the Medina, a stone, a real Hasidim, if you wear masks, if not. But anyway, I know what you mean by real Hasidim, not. Because you're so... In the wedding industry, you're chasnas galore, and and the whole frem music industry. I have a question to ask you now. I'm not judging anybody, no prejudice, or can, no miss it. I'm not looking. They most submissive, you know, submissive. Can't take a this. No, I want to ask you a question. I want to see your opinion on Getting this. Getting nervous already. No, five years ago, you went to chasna. Everybody's dancing in a circle. Yeah. First dance, the mishpocha. Second dance is, you know, the friends or whatever, hara, yeah? I'm doing the wedding five the, years ago. I'm just no, walking anybody in. I'm talking about. Oh, I'm walking know? into a wedding. Yeah, that's, that's how, yay, the chastens, gavain. Those them sitting and those them dancing in a circle. So we a poor shiny yidin with the takazatskas all your mitten. That's what it was. Let's dance. I come to chastens. And here's what's going on, yeah? You have the people. You have... No circle, a bunch of people in the middle, and you have this guy doing this, and then you have the other guy, and then you have no circles anymore. So we go over to a group of guys, and I ask them, what's going on over here? What, what are you doing? And they say, we're waiting for the drop. So I say, what's this, a drop? What are you waiting for? 
wait and see. So fine, I'm, I'm waiting, and all of a sudden the beat gets faster and faster and faster until the beat can't get any faster, and all of a sudden, boom, there's the drop. <laughs> then I see everybody shaking their heads. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. I'm asking you, Shmili. You're in the. You're. Where does this come from? Is this a good thing? Is it? What? What? Tell me a little bit. How? I don't know. For 50 years, everybody danced by chasna in a circle, and all of a sudden, everybody's in the middle doing their. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What's the days? Again, I'm not. Kenz on this section. Chlayes nish. Kenz on when Dovda Melech brought the Urim back. Yeah, he danced like that. The chvaisnish. I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm asking you what your opinion is. So, so you know, in the middle of your question, you were saying fifty years ago they were dancing around and around, and that was the norm. I I had a shmis with Beri Weber, and and we were discussing not my this question. Shiva, Shiva Beri, and uh, sorry. <laughs> um. Um, and, and I was talking to him about, the, about these kind of dances and everything, and he asked me a question. He says, let's say you were born in, the different, in, in a different place, you're not a Hasidic, you have nothing with Hasidic, you don't know about Judaism, you don't know anything. And you walk into a whole Ateris of Rome in Williamsburg, just in a green Dienstig Banacht, and you see, you see people walking around. I can't call it dancing, you know, the, the far out, there's a lot of circles, the Houston, then there's the friends who dance Leibadik, and then around them is a little bit slower, and then the uh, big round uh, with yeah, the El Hevra. By the circle, I was going to say, there are always the people that danced like this. You know, it's not walking like around in the circle, yeah. Those people. Um, but anyway, carry on, Betty was saying. So, and then there's the out, the, the, way, the way out circle, and that's where the mummies, they're just walking, whatever, looking around. Some, some look really, really miserable and just bitter. They got to be here because they want the mechitim should come to their wedding when they're making a simcha. Yeah, yeah. So they're just there after a day of hard work. And they were walking around. You can't call it dancing, just, you know, walking, walking. And you walk into such a hall. What would you think? What's going on here? And you would see also the other people doing like this. You, you would think as the people walking around, they're dancing and the person doing this is weird? I don't think so. I think you would think that the person doing this, you know, is really into it and is his jam and he's having fun with it. And the guy walking around is just, you know, he's lazy, he doesn't have so much koyach and he's just walking around. This is his contribution to Simchas who's in Kala. So what I say to it, first of all, five years ago, there was a lot of this going on. You just, you got to, had to go out of Howell, New Jersey and go to the Chachanas. I was a bocher in Stalin. Oh, you see, you yeah. were a good boy. So there was doing this, there was going on this for more than 10, 15 years already. Things always 15 change. years ago, yes, people were sure. doing, yes, there were no yes. DJs 15 years ago. You don't have to, you don't need a DJ to do, to do this. Uh -huh. But with a DJ, it goes much better, but, I can understand. You don't have a drop without a DJ. Right. You, so you, you can't do that. Yeah, but people do this without a drop. People, I, I was, you, 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 you said before that the guy told you, we're waiting for the drop. I didn't expect that to come. You don't, <laughs> need, you don't need to wait for a drop to do this. But I understand. And then after the drop, they just, this? <laughs> they mix it up. <laughs> until the beat, until they wait for the next For drop. the next drop. So music is meant to move you, right? That's what music is. To, 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 to maybe bring you closer. Jewish music is to bring you closer to Hashem. I don't bring you a Freilichkeit in Yiddishkeit, a Freilichkeit in the Torah. And it's meant to connect you. And, and if this guy by the wedding, his friend is getting married, and he's hearing a song, and he just wants to go like this now, whatever, by all means, let him do this. What, what do I care? And the other guy wants to do the Hara, he's doing the Hara. Each to their own, finish. There's all if kinds this of people. Is, if this is bringing somebody closer, if, if this is making somebody happy, by by mm -hmm. Heist, not by by. His friends chasna doesn't make the chusan happy, doesn't make his friends happy, right. the mechitten happy, the elt desire happy, himself happy, right? himself, yeah. The but you see, but you, you, you were saying about pre pre prejudice, prejudice, prejudice. prejudice. You were saying, so if, let me ask you: if a Hasidic guy walks <coughs> into such a hall and sees this bucher doing this, he would think to himself, "Oh my gosh, what's happening to him? I cannot take him for an item. I hope I I, I don't know have it everything anything to do with his family." But maybe they even who, have a smartphone. Maybe they have a schlesslech, they have keys. But you don't know, maybe this bucher, just before this wedding, he was in hospital singing for a patient or gave a hitch to a lady who was going to visit her daughter to the hospital, doing chesed, doing whatever he needs to do. 
And by the Chasana, this is his jam. This is what he wants to do. It's very <coughs> easy to judge and say, Oh, you're Rahmuna, let's learn. Did you see that guy doing this after the drop? It's very easy to say, but, but you, you never know because the title track is Madraigis. And I say, Yesh Madraigo is Rabo is Banoev Day Hashem. Vechilan Yoshven Lufuna of Lehanas Mazif Shechenu. Sorry. There's all kinds of Madraigis, right? Mm-hmm. You can always go better and go me Madraiga la Madraiga, but whenever place you are, you have a place at the table. That's part of the big message. So the guy dancing like this or the guy dancing like this, you don't know who they are or what they do. You just see their moves. And this is his move and that's their move. Madraigis! Now we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. All right. And we are going to come back and we are going to discuss your new album, Madraigis. Hello, the Free Stuff Exendu. Okay, welcome back. Now, cutting to the chase, Me. your new album, Madraigas, beautiful album. I love it. There are three tracks in a Madraiga, really. They're right. Um, what do you mean three tracks in a Madraiga? I'm no. not sure. I, I turned it on for that. Of course, I bought it right away. Which One second. I'm, I'm going to stop for a second. Chavre, so much work goes into making a production, making a CD, making an album. Instead of getting, yeah, we know. You could get it on Telegram. You get it on WhatsApp. Don't. He put in hours of work. Buy it. You could download it for ten ninety nine on my Telegram channel. No, you could download it for ten ninety nine. Even it, even if it's on streaming, you got Apple Music, Spotify. You have uh, Google Play, Amazon Play, all, YouTube Play. All those streaming, it's not a lot of money. You sign yourself up for ten dollars a year. You have all the music. Yeah, don't steal it. And yes, I'm saying steal it because it's stealing. Mm-hmm. But anyway, as soon as I went ahead and I downloaded it. From, from MostlyMusic.com. Mm. Yeah, I dare it. I went ahead, I downloaded it from them. The first track starts playing Madraga. It's a beautiful track. I'm waiting for the actual song to it's start. It's called Madraga Aleph, you and, mean? Madraga Aleph. And all of a sudden it goes to track two, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. And I see that track one is 40 seconds. Then I go a little bit further on to Madraga 2, which mm. is what track? It's it's not called it's Madraga track, 2. Track okay. 5. Track 5. It's Madraga Bais. And then by the third Madraga, Madraga which Gimbal, is not track 11. Track 11, I already thought for sure um, um, it's going to be again another 30 second thing, but that's actually a full. No. Wait, no, no, no. no. Madragas, the actual Madragas. All is, three Madragas are like 40 seconds, 45 seconds, because it's like kind of like an intro to the next song coming up. So the CD is is, is titled in Dry Madragas. You try to go with Madraga la Madraga. Weird. There you have it. Machashain. So there's three Madraigas. It's so funny how this all, how the album came together because if you would if you were to stop me six months ago, I could never tell you I would look at this would look foreign to me. It's not like we had a plan and a vision. It came together as we went along with the project. So I knew you skipped. We went from Shmeli Machabrocha straight to Madragas. There was right. a CD in the middle called On Stage. That's uh, that's like a live wedding album. Right. We gave it out for Piram, for Udir. It's like a wedding. A second dance. The CD starts. It's 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 it looks like it sounds like it's by a wedding. And then there's a chusna. I call up the chusna in the middle. I make a little bit of a kumzis, and then they go dance. 
So that was on stage. And by on stage, I realized it was, I, was, I was being very much myself. Because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't an album like Macha Bruch or Shmili 2, where there's like 10, 11 individual tracks with brand new material. It's what I do every night, actually. So when I recorded it, it I, felt, I, I felt good about it. I felt like I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to hear. It's your project. Exactly, exactly. And of course, I had help with Moshe wrote from a Managnum, Shulam Vakshal, Hershey Vamiger, Naftali Schnitzler. To work it out, you know, which song should come next, or what kind of songs we should put in to begin with. So by, by, by on stage, I, I became more in touch with myself. It, by Macha Brucha, I was more in touch with myself than Shmili too. And by on stage, I was more in touch with myself than Macha Brucha. And now by my dragus, I am even more in touch with myself, more than, than on stage. Even though it's, uh, it has brand new stuff, it's not like a wedding, it's old music. And by Shmili too, and by Macha Brucha, if you listen to the CDs, I, I, I sang the songs with a yeshiva shavura. I do Rachman Odiyone. And where I grow up, grew up, I say Rachman Odiyone. The Bieber hit, the Flacher Bieber hit. The regular Bieber The regular Bieber The regular and the Hoyche. So I never felt comfortable doing, doing, singing my material in the yeshiva shavura. MS was taki Hasidish. MS Vamunako, it wasn't MS Vamunako Zoy. It was Hasidish. And that was taki maybe the, more, the, the, the most authentic. And the, maybe that's why people liked it because I was just, I was singing. But come, Lulehem Auntie is also Yeshivish. And then Ani Hoylech, Lebes Akneses. And I, I didn't like it. It never felt, it never, it never said. It didn't feel like it was you. Maybe I just I didn't I, I, I felt like I'm being somebody else yeah like I'm I'm trying to do something because I remember Naftali my producer he 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 explained to me he said you listen you want to reach a bigger audience and you gotta understand that Monroe and Williamsburg where you grew up it's like a way you grew up but they're in the minority if you go to Israel you go to most of the Jewish clawless little places they say Baruch Hu Hashem I'm a Veirach whatever I'm a Voirach. But Barchi is a Monroe, is in the Hasidic places. And 70% of Klal Yisrael speaks Yeshivish. That's why Chazunas, yeah. You never I, thought I, about I, it. I, I thought the exact opposite. I thought Kanai and the Hasidim are taking over. Maybe we are because we're having a lot of kids. In the last 20 years, we've been gaining ground. But still, if you go to any, any stolen Ashil in Israel, they, they, they don't have the, the Hasidic Avura. True, but, but Stalin is a minority in the, by, by the Hasidim. Right. Saying, when's the last time you heard somebody saying, I need a teller chalent? I'm saying, a teller chalent. No, there was a lot of people say chalent. <laughs> Mayor Case says chalent, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mayor Case says chalent. But the point is, I think it's at least 70, 60, 70% of Klal Yisrael speaks with Yeshiva Shavura. That's, that's, that's no question. That Chazunas is Vahu Rachum. It's not Vahi Rachim. And and if you want to put out music for the for the average Joe, they 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 they, they speak the yeshiva shavura. So don't stick out, do the yeshiva shavura and like blend in with the flow, you know. I do the think that most singers though are Hasidish, no? No. The past few years, if we go again, through because it, you're seeing the past few years. It's the second time I'm saying the past few years. Hasidish kite did pick up, did gain ground. I see it by the chasen as the litvisher won the Hasidish hack. Which also brings me why we did Hasidish. Hasidish is definitely the new trend. I don't want to mention any names, but there was a lot of Litvish singers who they were doing good. They were putting out music and, and people, I love their stuff. But Satnish Gechap, I don't see them at weddings because even the Litvish people, they don't want to have the Litvish guy, they want the Hasidish guy. This is how I remember uh, years ago. Shweki, Yaakov Shweki, what is that person? Um, he put out Yiri Ainaini with the Hasidic Shavura, and the other one was shocked. You're talking probably 15 years ago. Yiri on you did, on you did. On Shweki, you did. 15 years ago, exactly. Because 15, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. You know how it and, goes? And everybody was shocked. Of course I know how it goes. Yiri Ainaini, Ainaini. Yiri Ainaini, Ainaini, Yiri Ainaini. You were shocked? I wasn't shocked. It was definitely something. We had, we had a Svardi coming out of deal. Yeah. Um, singing El Hasid the Shavur. Mm. 
It's not something you see every day, which we, we talk and speak about the, the track that you did together with Ohad, because mm. I don't know if Ohad's Swari or not, but he's also clean shaven. Yes, I don't know if Beautiful he's voice. Nobody knows I, anything I know. about Ohad. Yeah, right? nobody knows like anything about foreign, when people When I told people that I'm doing a duet song with somebody, try to guess whom. I give you five guesses. Nobody, nobody guessed, guessed Ohad. And even when Ohad called me up, he messaged me, maybe we do a, du- a duet together. I was like, whoa, Oad, you know, that's different. I, Where have I, you been? It's, it was very interesting. Oad is, uh, is, is something people, wouldn't, people didn't expect. But I don't know anything. Is he Hasidish? I don't know what he is. Probably not Hasidish. Because he's shaving his beard. That's why. Probably not. And he probably doesn't wear a biba head. No. Or a hoi chabib. <laughs> or a fa chabib. I'm glad he's just wearing a <laughs> yarmulke. Yeah, yeah. huh? Maybe you didn't even, not even have stuff in it. Or a krachet. But anyway... Um, we were talking about Madrigas, and you were saying over here you feel more real, oh, more comfortable. Exactly. So after we did, I kept on telling Naftali, we got to snap out of this yeshivish stuff. And then we came to Macha Brucha, and we, I did a few songs in the Hasidic Shavura like I wanted to, and then we re-recorded it in the yeshivish Shavura. Because I always trusted Naftali. I mean, he's the producer. I pay him for his for his guidance. You know, it's very stupid of me to be paying him money Naftali and not take his Naftali? advice. He likes to call himself Naftali. It's the world. The world. The world yeah. called Naftali. I know him as I know him as Namish. That's how I call him. Namish is Naftula Moshe Schnitzler is Niemem Shian. Is Namish because I like him. It's Belush and Chiba. It's Namish. So I call him Naimish, Naftali, Naftuli, everybody, Naftuli, Moshe, people know him differently. Great person, Stamos. Yes, he really, he really is. Yes, he's uh, fantastic. And he kept on saying, Shmili, we got to stick to Yeshivish. I know it's not us. And, he, and I trusted him. I said, all right, we're doing Yeshivish. And even on the interviews after CD, I was always be get bombarded from, from Velvo Schmelzer. Why Yeshivish? And I always have to come up with, not, not excuses, but like reasons why I'm doing it. I have a lot of... Yeshivish weddings, and it's easier for the Yeshivish guy to listen to Asher Bukhar Bohanu, me he call her Ahmim, as opposed to Asher Bukhar Bohuni. It's, it's different. Anyway, but I, 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 I kept on seeing Matish Tarmatz is putting out his stuff, and he's sticking to Hasidish. Azikonik is doing his thing, also Hasidish, and I see a lot of Azikonik being a lot about the Litvish Chippers. And Litvish crowds, and they, they all know about Azikonik and Matish Tarmatz as well. Everybody knows him. He's going all over the world, and he's doing Hasidish. When he thinks, when he sings different for different projects, he can he can do he can do a yeshiva. He could change it, right? But for his spot, album, right. he's being authentic. Hasidish, right? So after I was more in touch with myself, like I started saying after Machabrucha and after on stage, I knew I, I knew this coming album is gonna be strictly me. I want to do Hasidish. I also realized that the, yeshi- the, the Litvisha people, they, they don't care what I think. Just sing, and it's all right. It's Yiddish, it came from the heart. That's it, that's it. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a few people who, who would tell me by the chippa I should do hu yevoreich, not hi yevoreich. I can understand it. Because it's but a problem, overall, it might not be, uh, yeah, it might not, it might the be condition may not be yeah. hal. Uh, yeah. Either way, but I told Naftali, I want to go, I want to, we're going to do a, a Hasidish. And Naftali also, he, 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 he at, at Mordig, when he was like, yes, we're doing it. Who's uh, vast? He Moshe wanted I should make my arm go straight. Yeah. So I told him to go on Hasidish. What? <laughs> no, I think you're talking behind my back. Ask him why he's not doing this stuff. Um... Uh, so, 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 what, what, what was I saying? Okay, so, Macha Brucha, I couldn't copy Macha Brucha again. I knew also, I'm not going to go in the Macha Brucha direction. I want something fresh. We got to, you got to re, re, not re-invite, re, reinvent yourself, it's called. You, you got to have like a rebirth every now and then. So, by my Macha Brucha, I had a track called Kyle Mestatair. You know Kyle Mestatair? We Kyle Mestatair, Moshe Gemar <laughs> you know, really, really Hasidish daughter of Aktenik. And Yossi Green tells me uh, we were doing the Bruche and Nachas, and he said by the rehearsals, he says, Kal Mestatar is a nigen. Well, he didn't hear, he never heard such a beautiful wow. nigen. And it, also because it was authentic, it was Hasidish. The first time I heard it, I knew it's a good song. I, I want it on my I want it on my album. And my Shver always kept on telling me, Shmili, what's Machsidish, Machasidi, Rivikal Mestatar. 
But he wanted to go even further. He said there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of old Neginim from Stalin and from Mojits and from Bells. You can bring it back. That's what Mushi Krauss just did. With Sklen. But Sklen did it with Soschik Gutman. Sklen did it in the past a few times giving mm-hmm. out their stuff. But I wouldn't focus just on Chabatska songs or on Sklen songs. I would, I would focus on nice variety of Schneller, Stata, from old music. And I started doing that. I have a guy in my neighborhood, my roof in the neighborhood of Naftula Steinwurzel. He has a brother, Rabbi Sru Steinwurzel. And he is known, he's a Baltfilla, he's a singer. He has an MP3 in his head. He knows a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of old stuff. Fast, slow. And he davens for the Yomad. He comes davening for the Yomad in by Steinwurzel. And he starts by the Shchoidish Elul, the Sliches, and the Shashunim Kippur, Sikis, throughout the whole thing. And he never repeats never any repeats league, Never song. repeats. And if he does, he knows he did it already, and he has a reason why, he, why, why he wants to do it again. And he davens in Arshil, and always people say, Nish, Mili, Machabs, Altenig, Nemdeinig, and people always have Aitzes. Uh, I have a good idea oh. for you. Oh! Why don't you? Me. So, so I told, I told Bashver, you know what? You're saying I should do this album. I know this guy, Rabbi Slush I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit with him. Let's see what, you know, let's see if something is going to materialize. Lamasa, nothing materialized. I sat with him. I heard some stuff. It didn't. So, Chikaret Samir. But I did know that I, this next seat is going to go in the direction of Hasidish. I want to keep it the Kalmas Tata style. It's not going to be only old tracks. But I want to mix it up, and I remember in Yeshiva, Reb Chaim Leib Shrot Megan Feshe, he would, Friday night after the Bata, if he was in a good mood, if we behaved, he would do this Kai Luda Nigen. It's an old Spinka song. And he, he sang nice. And he starts Kai Luda, and I call him Asim. And all the Bukharim answer, ah. And he says, Burichim Avoid, ah. We've gone to Shomu, ah. God live with Tivoy. And it's the whole, the whole Nigen. And I always liked it. And I told Naftali, maybe we'll put in this song. It was good. And then a few weeks later, I also thought to myself, Hashem, heal, Elohim. Hashem. Like, it, it, I always also liked it. I never knew that I liked it, but if I tapped in, I know, you know, this, this Tania, when the Baltfilla says it seven times, it does something for me. So I also know I want this. And then we were doing a Nigen Lechu. We came, uh, we came after a break. We have, we have that, to take that's breaks. a new song. No? Lechu is a new song. Yes. We went into it. Hershey, Hershey composed it with Aftali and me. And it was a good song. And Hershey said, Okay, Shmuri, take the mic. Let's record a demo. So we have a demo of it. And he takes the mic and he, and he says, It's also an old tenir from Hershey Lamerimen of it. And a lot of people do it for Geshem. A lot about Tfilas. So it's a Bakanta tenir. You know this tenir? You sure know, you don't know? It, sa- it sounds a little bit... First of all, Stone Davins, everything like... <laughs> they all the same? No, 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 not all the same, but different than everybody else. Yeah, yeah they, they want to make sure that we don't put out <laughs> any albums. <laughs> but I thought that the Tani was very, very similar to Karibo in Olam. So that's, I heard it, I was like, sounds like the Mikdushak thing. It, it does yeah. sound. But maybe maybe there's a few minor, you saw it. Yeah, yeah I'm saying, yeah. Oh, this by the Mikdushak doesn't go, yeah, ma, 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 yo, 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 yo. Maybe so, some people do that to me by the Mikdushak to me. Maybe. So Hershey just started this, and then Kilo Nuwe Kilo Yu Nuwe Kaiser Melichu. We updated the Melichu. He just went into the song, and just just he said, I don't know why or how it came to him. So that's after after we recorded this, I I had Ashami Ali Kim, I had Kai Ludoin, and now I had Tirida Da 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 Da. A lot of Batchunim use it for Gram, and it's a very Bakanta Tania. So that's when that's when it came to us like we're gonna do Madraigus. I don't want to do the whole Kyle Uda Nigan because it's a long Nigan and it becomes fast. I just want to start with it. Just a few words. It goes, you don't know the song. So it goes, Kyle Uda, Nakalamasim, ah, Burichem Voyra, Vikan Shumu, ah, God Leviti Voy, ah, Mula Yoilam, ah, 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 Das is Vinu, ah, Savivim Hoidoi, ah, 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 and then it starts, Oi Hamis Gue, again. So at first I wanted to do till also das is vinua so at least I finished that first thing but lamasa I didn't use the das part 
the das is vino, the das part. <laughs> I didn't do the das is vino part. You never used it or you just didn't <laughs> use it in the album? So, so he's, everything is Yata Deshmaya. So the, the whole project came together and we have Madraga Aleph starts Kailudain. And you go into Nishdu and Achaz Afolk Vesad Vien Zigroes El Liber God. Ein Kudosh Kashem. Vistam was a very good song. Good beat. Gonna for sure become. Probably already became a big chas in the head. I'm yes, assuming. yes, they're doing it at weddings. It's more difficult for such an egg to make it make its way into weddings because this is a freilich an egg. The rhythm is like one sixty tempo. And by, by weddings, they usually do sad nagin? No, no, by weddings, by the first dance where you do the tempo 160, there's mohe de yani, or there's ta-ra-ra-ra-pa-param. There's old stuff that everybody uses. And the, I thought that that's away. what this goes in, like a first, Yes, but first it's, you know, in the last 10 years, if you ask me what, what songs became popular for the first dance, you have a hallelu, a hallelu, a hallelu. You have maybe... You have those three maybe Tata also Shweki Hasidish. Yeah, but but that's that's already more than ten years old. Yeah, that's twelve so years old. Maybe I'm saying fifteen years. So give me fifteen that's years. Shweki L'shem Shemayim. Yes, L'shem Shemayim. No, that yeah, MS, MS was yes, from L'shem Shemayim. Correct. Yes. So maybe it was more than twelve years. But the point is, so it went through fifteen years, and I just. Mentioned five songs. Oh, you have Nixafu, Nixafu from MBD. So six songs. And then if you look at the second dance, what came in, in the last 15 years, there's a whole list. So the second dance obviously is much easier to get in. If it's a good pop song, the Bukharam like it, it moves you, it goes in. But by the first dance, it needs to have a background. The Halalu was the square background. Kir so I think, was maybe was the Karlin Stalin background. No, it was, it was some someplace else. Oh, so I forgot. Uh, Either way. Uh, uh, it's a through it Exactly. It has, it has some backing. And if it comes along, it's just a, a secular singer, not a Rebbe or a, a, a Nigan that they didn't make for Hasidic Shehoif, I can, I can, I can also reckon on various songs. Lipa Shmelse, Vedap Kaini. It's a good geschmack and it never made its, made its way in. Aral Asaman has also a, a lot of gitan again. It didn't make it in. So Ein Kudosh Kashem is a good song and people told me before the album came, this song is going to make it. I don't know. I don't know. You know, Yishuma had Yishuma. Or right. you do, do Yishuma. But that's not in the first dance. That's more in the third dance people doing it. The bands are doing it in the first dance like Yishuma. Interesting. So Yishuma made it in. It's also a Laufer formula. All is uh, all the other Laufer mm-hmm. songs in Vayegefen with Matsimatov. So he has oh, his first, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has he has his formula for the for the first dance. So Ein Kodesh Kashem is a labor digging. It's like Mohi Dayani. It's a fast song. One sixty tempo. Yes, it's a Hasidic vibe. One sixty tempo is Hasidi. You you can't confuse it unless it's like funny lyrics or like I don't know what jazzy. Yeah. But if it's a 160, 165 tempo, chances are that's a Hasidisha nigg, and that's what they were aiming for. And I want to put out a Hasidisha album. I'm not going to start with Macha Brucha or with even MS, that's a 120 tempo. I'm starting with a Freilich and 160. 160. And if it gets into weddings, by all means, you know, Gavaldik. But if it doesn't get, it's still a great song. I love it's it. It's a beautiful song. When you're flying down the highway in the car, you can't have something on a 120 tempo. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta go for 160. And then we had Killam Ahivim. Killam Ahivim is Avels. Killam Namba Bari You start off with an accordion, yeah? What instrument yes. do you start off? It's, it's beautiful. The whole thing, it just starts off. I'm sitting in the car like, what instrument is that? I don't think I've ever heard that instrument. It's an accordion? I don't on know. an album. Isn't it? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's an accordion, yes. It, it starts off very, yeah. It's very nice, vibe. classic. But also Hasidish. You feel the Hasidish guy. It's for Stais. Kelam even was composed by Rav Shloim Akalish. He composed it 20 years ago for the Belze, for the Belze Hoif. And when I, when I worked for Shira, I would go around Shabusim with the Shira guys. They would sing this song. And I always loved it. And I asked, where it is? I never heard this. Who sings it? And he says, nobody sings it. It's just about counting in bells. So I knew right there I want to put it on my album. It didn't make it on Shmeli 2. It didn't make it on Macha Brucha. But on Madragius, it Finally. had a special place. And yeah. then we have Benai Achula. Benai Achula. Benai Achula I call a sister for Kyle Mestatai. Both, both are sang by Shalashidas, by Rava the Rav. And both are very Dorach Gevaik to Hasidish and Aginam. It has a little bit of a schmeck of Ko Echsoif, the Karlina Ko Echsoif. Right. And it's also very Hasidish. So Madraga Aleph is strictly Hasidish. You see? Kailudon, Ein Kudish, Kelamiv, Menai Chulo. 
Now we move on to Madraiga Bayes. Madraiga Bayes starts also with da 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 and then you go into, instead of Ankudesh, which is a fast Hasidish song, you go into Lechu, which is 120. Lechu, I love the song Lechu. It's a good song. It's, it's, the, the words of Stamas are beautiful. There aren't many songs on Kilo Inu on Lechu Lechu. No, there's some, there's a... There are a few, yeah. Adir Bim Lechu. You know that one? That People one, put it on right. Ailu Ailu. Right, but it's, it's a very, very, very nice song. My kid's favorite song is Bunem. Yeah, Bunem. Beautiful song. I'm getting the most unless, feedback on Bunem. Unless I'm getting mixed up. No, get me a little kid. That's Bunem. That's Bunem. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. That's, that's, that's going to become a, a slow chasna song, a kumzit song, a everything. It's a stunning song. It talks beautiful, to the heart. It song. talks to the heart. It's, it's what every father wants, what every mother wants. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like it was together with last year, Benny Friedman's Vizakeni. Oh, like, that's a nice thing. Baruch Levine, Ben Yisrael. It goes, you should mix them together. They should make a medley out of it. Maybe, but that's, yeah. that's a ballad. You can figure it out. This is the umpa. And that's, that's, I think that's way slower. But I hear, I hear what you're saying. It's... It's a, it's a sequel to it. Beautiful. Absolutely. And then we have Yosem Mokiv uh, I'm saying, there was only one up until now, no? From Yom Tevelech. Yom Tevelech. How does it go? And you went ahead and you put out, it's Moiradik. I love it. This is Gavaldik. If you listen to it, it puts a smile on your face. And I'll tell you, I was sitting with the producer, Moshe Grunfeld. We were sitting right before the... And we were schmoozing about it. And all of a sudden, Moshe says... I wonder if Shmilly is going to make a music video out of it. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm saying I'm in the video industry, and all of a sudden, I'm she said, Well, Barak, what about you making a music video out of it? And the truth is, I don't do commercial video anymore. I do my own projects or whatever, but it sounded interesting. I looked at Moshe and said, Listen, I'm not going to go to make an olden day music video about it because it's just too much work. Yeah, well, no, you mean not like, too like much making work. an old house and an old, the old fish. boat and the old. I I could do it. I, I the skull of a genius. The whole thing was olden days. But talking about a lot, a lot of work. I told Moshe maybe I would do um, a today's days, and and it would be a nice concept. A today's days, Yosef Moshe Shabbos. You have a guy Yosef Moshe Shabbos didn't have a lot of money. He was a poor guy. Yeah, but he loved Shabbos, and I said. You have that rich guy, can I know what I'm saying? I don't know if, if, if a navigator is a rich enough car, but you know what I mean? You have... No, you're going to need a Maybach or a Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Moshe, come on, tell, tell him what we need. No, in the... Fr I don't know. But in the high machine, and, a Navi is... I'm a saying, Navi is the top that you have? A Navi. The rich guy is not from. The rich guy wasn't from. No, of course not. Uh -huh. If yes, it would help out yes, Moshe Shabbos. Oh, oh. oh. Yes, that's why we need you, Moshe. Get that's in why it. we need Moshe. Get in there, Moshe. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you want to make a video from no, today's today. No, I was days. wondering. I'm telling you what we were talking about. Um, um, about doing videos? I don't know. I'm not thinking about videos right now. I, I so Stamos, can someone roll? Yeah. So Usir. Slides. Usir. Slides. So we can make a slide. Right I don't here know if it's moment. Usir. If, if it brings you closer to the, to the Maibishten, that's what it's all about. I, I've had one of, one of a composer tell me that... Uh, the CD doesn't have, this is not a song, this one, this song is just a Tania, this song is just a gimmick, I don't know what, you don't have any real songs. And I told him, what do you mean by real songs? To me, a real song is, when I, somebody can send me a video of a Bukharl or so, anybody listening to my music and they have a connection, that's all it is. I don't need real songs, well, why do I need real songs? The music is meant to move you and to, to help you communicate, you know, spiritually and you know get in touch with yourself and you know the Bashefer and Yiddishkeit and everything that's what music is for me at least that's right. what it is and it's meant to move and if you say it's just a tania or this is just a gimmick so be it be it if, a gimmick. if it helps somebody become closer to the bunish level that's what it is and which brings me also to my other point I, I mentioned earlier where you said about telegram and about people copying the music I'm thinking if I should say it because I, I, in no way, don't misunderstand, am I 
okay with people downloading it illegally or copying it. But I do realize that my Parnusa, my main Parnusa, is not from selling albums. It's nice, it's good, I more than break even, I make money, but it's not, it's nowhere near to, you know, to pay a mortgage and, uh, you know, buy new shoes. It's or, good. or a Lincoln Navigator. Or a Navigator. So, my, my main income is doing live gigs, doing chasanas, weddings, shows, events, anything, live performances. And I need to put out material. People should request and people should have something to listen to. And they say, oh, you know, Shmili Younger, I want, I want to have him. So we did an interview on the radio with, not called Chai, it was a different show. And I don't know, I don't remember the name. Shulam Vakshal and Yanki Lubin in Israel have a big radio. And they, we spoke about the album and the music was playing on the album. And then somebody took the whole interview and took out just the music so track two starts with me talking, and then shock it, let people listen to it. That's how the track starts. But he did it anyway. He had all my music, all 14 tracks, and it wasn't the clearest, it wasn't the best quality, but it was out there, and it was very, very, you know, I just released the album. I want people to buy it, and now it's all over Telegram, Instagram, and uh, WhatsApp. But then I decided, you know what, I'm not going to beat myself up. What do I want? I want my music to get to everybody. Everybody should listen to it. People should know it. People should request it. People should sing it at the Shabbos table, in the car with the kids. It should be a family album. And, and if you request the songs and you sing the songs and you like the songs, that's the whole point of it. That's why I told the guy, Chaim, who we spoke before, make it available on all streaming, not just on iTunes or on... Uh, most of the music, make it available because everybody wants to listen to it on streaming and just open it up. So we, whatever. He said we should do it in January, February, but Lamas, it's all out. I opened it. People should listen to it, enjoy it. And th in the same way, I, I wasn't beating myself up. Oh my gosh, people are stealing your music. Oh, and you know, why are you copying it? I, I don't want to be that guy. So a lot of people came to me from this business asking for videos. Would you do a video saying that you can't copy? Would you do a video how it's usir? And I always told them, I'm not in this fight. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, con condole it is the name of it? Condone. Condone is what? I'm for it's it? It's Oh, I'm not. Condone means you agree with something. Oh, so I'm not condoning it. But I'm also not going to condemn it because I'm not your Rosh Hashiva, your Magachi, coming to complain and cry. <clears throat> don't steal my CD. You want to listen to my music, you enjoy it, you have Apple Music, stream it, see it on YouTube, download it, just do it legally. That's what they say. Legally. Yeah, yeah. So, Moving right along. So, Madraiga, so Madraiga buys Kesem Lichel. Who Boonim is saying Boonim is your favorite. And Boonim is not just... Yeah. When we did Boonim, it, it, it started, Boonim started with one tenir. That's, that's what we knew that we're going into. It was Naftali Moshe's Naftali song. And he said, and it, that, That's how it came along. But the higher part, Naftali says, he doesn't want this song should be exclusive just for couples struggling with kids. Because there's a lot of, there's more people having kids than enjoying their kids. And also, you know, people don't want to be stigma. Oh, this is song is for me because I, I'm suffering. I don't have kids. So the high part is, those couples waiting for kids, they can enjoy... You know, what does everybody want? Just an interfering into the chippa and just to see naches of them. So everybody can enjoy the song. You don't have to be childless to enjoy this nigen. That's what that was born in world. And was Moshe Moshe Shabbos. Yosef Moshe Shabbos held up the whole production. We, we, we would have been out with Madragas probably by the Shoshuna. But Yosef Merkish Shabbos, you know, because of the words go, It's so fast, it's so... Can you do it something? No. No, no, you know? no. Not even going to try. You want, you want me to try? You want, you want me to do let's, something? Should let's I do let's it go again? right now. Here we go. So the words are inter interconnected. And we were sitting with Heshev Amigiri, was writing the lyrics, and every week we came up with two more lines, another two lines, and another two lines, and then we started changing the first two lines, and it was a long, long process, but it was worth it, I think. It's a solid it's, song. It's really solid, yes, it's definitely solid. It's going to take a long time. People download the, the music today's days from the phone, meaning I bought it on my phone, to see the lyrics of yours and Moikashabas. I remember... 
when Shlomi Daskal came out with Ambride. Yeah. I remember I sat there with the lyrics. And I yinged a book and I sat with the lyrics, with the music for a week until I looked at I'm saying, yeah. And so, so we have to figure out what to do to get all the lyrics from. Here's some Mukha Shabbos for the Bukhim that want to learn it. But anyway, we move on to Madraiga Gimel. No, we forgot two chapters. We have Tifilusi. Tifilusi and Seed. Tifilusi is a nigga from Pinky Weber. You can't go with a CD without Pinky Weber. It was a very nice song, Tifilusi. And then we had Se'i. Se'i was one of the first tracks we knew was going to be on the album. Like when you work on the CD, on the project, a lot of songs fall out of and songs come in and then they fall out of it. It's a long process. But Se'i we did in the same session that we, we, we had she composed Benaya Hulu and Se'i was at the same sitting by, by Eamon Derheim. And Se'i... What do you mean? Had she just sat down and composed the song on the spot? Yeah. We came up to his house, to his apartment, me and Aftali and Shai Gross. You know Shai Gross? He did, he says, Mizan and Dana, Kindi, Dibist, Oder, Vafille, Behasture. It's all his stuff. He's a, a Hebrew man. And he came up, he's also a Hasidic guy. And we started just jamming by the piano, this song and that song. And we probably did 15 songs and only two materialized. Maybe there's a lot but of but other still, good stuff. But still, you sat down and you made up a song. That's, yes. That's wow. Yes, yeah, so I told you before, Madraga Aleph. It starts, and then you go into Kail, Kail Udoin, sorry, to Ein Kudush Kashem, which is a Freilich and Madraga buys, after the Madraga, you're going to a, to a disco, a little bit more, a bit more, uh, 2020. But Madraga Gimel, after Hashem Elikim, that's when we're going to Madragas. It's not very fast, it's not very slow. It's just Madragas. And so people ask me, what's your favorite Nigen? It always changes. Now it's Madragas. Madragas is my favorite thing. I go to my car and I'm, I'm going to drive home after this uh, live interview. And I'm going to sit down. I'm, I'm probably going to listen to Madragas. Madragas is a song. All right. It's, it's a very powerful message. It's very... I had a big story with this, with Beri Weber. We were composing this nigga, me, Hershey, and Aftali. We were doing it. And uh, Hershey had an idea. Me, Madraga, la Madraga, Talaini. And the Chofetz Chaim has nice words, Yesh Madrag Yisrabois. And during, it felt good, wow, we, we're doing a nice nigan. I took out my phone, we took an Instagram, and just whatever, a post. And then later that night, I got a call from Hershey that Betty Weber calls, and Betty says, I just saw you were sitting with Shmili and we're doing the Madrag This is my idea, it's my song, it's my tune. W- what are you doing? What am I missing? And I said, oh my God, I completely forgot. Yes, I did it with you two years ago. And it was your concept. And this was the mi madrai, le madrai, mi madrai. The, the concept steps, everything, it was his idea. And Hershey said, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. Let's, let, let's work it out. And so he asked me, hey, Shmili, what, what am I telling Betty? So I told him, let me call Betty. Let's straighten this out. And I called Betty. And he told me, yeah, it's his song. I said, wow, I have no idea. It's yours, obviously. But they say, the moich, the grass, the ganav. You hear a tania here, a tania there, and then you just make up your own stuff. You don't know, you don't realize that you heard it already somewhere. The first part is completely his, but Betty, you got to understand, we did a high part, and we did a third part, which had nothing to do with you. It was just us, and it was so good. It felt so right. And then just, please, maybe, maybe just let it slide. Give me the song. And he said, you know, it's, I don't give me the song. I worked on it. It's, it's an idea. He has to think about it. And he called this Rebbe, a whole, Arof, Arof. Lamas, he told me, Shmili, get the matuna, the nigging be matuna. Wow. And it's funny, until he didn't say that he's giving it to me, I didn't really like it. I, I, I heard the demo. And I was like, all right, it's good. It's nice. It's a good message. After he gave me the go-ahead, he said, Shmuley, take it with Matuna. I started loving it. Wow. But then it cooled off. I started liking Yerai Shumayim, but now we're back at, to Madraigas. So we're now loving it. Now again. Yes. Umayn again is a geschmack, a beady song. Yes, Umayn. Umayn is a labor de Ganigen, like right. Adr Bemlichu, like Emes Vemino. It's more a horror, a disco. And we were having a very hard time with the high part for Umayn. We couldn't find a high part. We want to know what high, high part it went? One high part went like this. Um... Oh, oh, you my, no, like, oh, my, she is with Revias and Fitzumine. Well, the Mara, remember the one, well, line, and we are God is through, I love mine. 
Ai, oh mine, 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 oh mine. That was one of the the things, and I just we couldn't find a good. Couldn't find, but ah, it's great. Found it. And then you shemaim, such a beautiful song. Yerash shemaim. My pushet ayi daven tzem boi neshloelam kemi yerash shemaim. That's it. That's what it is. And it's beautiful. It's from the heart. Yes, yes. It's a it's a nisach for a person if he wants to communicate. He, somebody tells me that he's davening. His whole davening is yerash shemaim. That's how he davens now. Wow. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, I open the door for people in this generation, for Bukharam, or even, even in Galat, people for themselves, they don't know how, how, to, how to ask for stuff. They're not in touch with themselves. They, they're just they're busy with the family and, and the Parnus and, and just the grind of life. And they never have the space just to communicate with Hashem. <speaking in Hebrew> Oh, ich will sein, ein Reich Shumayim. It's very simple. I just I want to be a Reich Shumayim. <coughs> and and it, it took off. People are singing it all over the place. I'm getting videos non-stop, non-stop. Beautiful. Everybody expects me to post, but I cannot post all of them. And, and uh, folks out there, not all the videos you're sending me is good videos. It's just, let me send a video for Shmili. You're not send, singing the song right. If you sing it right and you put in your eigenschaft, like something that. like that, I might repost it. It has to be nice. It has to be authentic. You know, not just sitting in the car playing Yerai Shumayim. I'm not going to get to post. <laughs> Shmeli, thank you so, so much for coming on. So again, Chevra, Madragas is available, like Shmeli said, all over the place. He wants everybody to be able to access it, to be able to stream it, mm -hmm. to be able to download it, to be able to listen to it. It's a beautiful album. I have it playing in my car, not 24-7, because I'm not in my car 24-7, but a lot. Yes. Shmuley, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate we'll it. We'll have to see what's going to happen with the music video. We'll see. And I think the most important point, Nikita, that I came out with in today's interview is with your Zaida, that had faith in you, and Naftali Schnitz, Naftali, as you call him, had faith in you, Hebra. If there's somebody out there that that needs a little bit of encouragement that you we see all, potential we all, need, we all need encouragement we all need chizik we all need a good work go ahead me now if you see somebody you don't have to go look for it you know it's all around us all the time everybody everybody is you know uh, uh, trying to find themselves and 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 to be to be who they are but we're so distracted and we, we're so not focused on the right thing. I'm talking to myself, you know, I'm focused on this and that and that. Just just be yourself and it's it's very it's very that's the challenge. That's the challenge. So if you go, I go finish it. It was a nice message. If you see somebody that needs a good word. So now go out there, encourage people. Get, tell them to buy Madragas. Tell them to buy Madragas. Tell them if they listen to Madragas it's gonna change them. But also yes, if you have faith in somebody, not you go ah oh, there's a famous thing with the stocks. You have to buy low and, and sell, sell high. high, right? When you go and there's a stock that's all the way down, you know this stock has potential. That's when you become rich. If you go and the stock is all the way on the top, oh, you go and tell somebody you believe in them. Tell somebody you have faith in them. When they're getting $300 a night at a chasna with a Bieber head, overweight book head, that's when you go into them. Buy them a wireless mic. Buy them an in-ear monitor. <laughs> drive them to Chasanas. Okay, now, Shmili, any message that you want to give to our audience? Just if you do go out and you buy the album, you download it and you feel it, I want, I, I'm want. i hopeful that you, it's going to bring you me madraige la madraige. And also, one of the great things about this album that when you finish by track 14, Yerai Shemaim, and the CD starts again from track 1, you don't start from Madraiga Aleph. You're already up to Madraga Tezvuf because it goes higher and higher. This I know from the Malas, from the ACD. Anyway, it should bring you closer to Hashem and it should bring you a Freilichkeit and Yiddishkeit. Wow, thank you so much again for being with us. Thank you so much, our producer, Moishi Grunfeld, making it all happen and yes. even chiming in from time to time yes. in interview this Gewaldic. And a huge thank you to Shulam Badansky for letting us use this space over here as our studio over here in Pearlman Square. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Till next time.
כל טוב.